All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you all for uh, for joining us today. Uh, very excited uh, to be able to talk about the Ohio Coalition Institute and uh, the first um, Foundations and Community Coalition Development Learning Opportunity. Uh, I believe will be the uh, the first of a few learning opportunities and engagement opportunities from the Ohio Coalition Institute. Uh, so more, more to come about those later. Uh, right now, let's talk about the incredible opportunity and the RFA uh, that is open. Um, first thing I would like to do is uh, introduce from the Ohio Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services, uh, Molly Stone. Molly, uh, welcome. Thanks for joining us and um, good afternoon. Thanks, James. Good afternoon, everyone. I always have trouble with my mouse trying to get back to the, the unmute button. Um, I just wanted to take a couple seconds to um, thank you all for being here today. We are very excited for um, this first uh, cohort of our Coalition Institute. Um, you know, this piece is the foundational piece. Um, so Foundations in Community Coalition Development. Um, once, once folks go through this, they'll then go on to um, doing CCATs and strategic planning and all those kinds of things. So we're very excited to have something in place that can guide our coalitions through a consistent process and, and um, you know, get folks really uh, being able to do the work. I know you're all doing the work, but then maybe uh, looking at some common outcomes and uh, documenting the work that you're doing so that we can show how these communities are changing with all of your hard work. So um, with that, I just want to say welcome. Thank you for being here and um, good luck to everyone. So we're excited. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you so much, Molly. Uh, and as we will move through today's uh, presentation, um, feel free to uh, to uh, save your questions. We will uh, have a little time at the end. We'll also talk about how to submit questions um, and how, uh, how everyone can see all of the answers to the submitted questions online. Um, but we, we will have some time for that, I promise. Uh, we are also uh, recording this, as you, you may have gotten the Zoom uh, notification. This webinar in its entirety will be available online. Uh, we'll get that online and it will be available at the Ohio, uh, the Ohio Coalition Institute website, uh, which you will see the, the link and the URL for that um, at least half a dozen times, uh, but I promise I will say it more than that, uh, just so everyone knows where to go. Uh, first thing we want to talk about is, is kind of what the, uh, the Ohio Coalition Institute is, uh, how this came about. Uh, so through a uh, partnership with uh, the Ohio Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services, the Ohio Suicide Prevention Foundation, Prevention Action Alliance, which is where I work, uh, so proud to be a, a part of the PAA team and a part of this, uh, and Prevention First. Uh, those partners, uh, with support, of course, from uh, the Ohio Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services, uh, developed the Ohio Coalition Institute in order to provide equitable learning opportunities that will empower Ohio's diverse community coalitions. Uh, and you are probably saying that's great. Uh, we're here to learn about um, the RFA. Uh, tell us about the flexible learning stipend, uh, the, the thing that everyone is here for. Uh, so let's, let's move a little bit into that. Um, we have an incredible opportunity um, through the Ohio Coalition Institute for the Foundations in Community Coalition Development. And as Molly said, this is kind of a foundational uh, learning opportunity. Uh, so for the purpose of this learning opportunity, I think it's important that we define a coalition um, because we have so many great coalitions in the state of Ohio and some of them work on very specific things. Um, through Prevention Action Alliance, we have the Statewide Prevention Coalition Association, uh, which has historically uh, worked with coalitions working uh, to reduce substance use or misuse in their communities. Uh, the Ohio Suicide Prevention Foundation has a number of great coalitions that they work with uh, to reduce uh, suicide across Ohio. Um, the Problem Gambling Network of Ohio, and I, I see our, our Cuyahoga Problem Gambling Coalition uh, uh, represented here. Uh, so we do have some gambling coalitions as well. We have reentry coalitions, so a number of great coalitions. So we thought it was very important to define what that looks like. Uh, for the purpose of this learning opportunity, a coalition is defined as a group of diverse members who, who serve a defined community to promote community level change. Uh, coalitions engage an array of community sectors and individuals to build a power base that works to influence social norms and community policies. What I think is very important to note throughout the RFA, throughout the Coalition Institute site, um, and from all of our partners, uh, is that this is not an opportunity open to um, only substance use prevention coalitions, uh, only problem gambling 
prevention coalitions, only suicide prevention coalitions. Um, this is open to uh, coalitions uh, that want to engage community sectors and individuals to build a power base that works to influence social norms and community policy. That's a very broad definition, uh, and we would love to see a, a broad uh, number and, and type of, of applicants. Uh, so we're inviting community coalitions working to impact the mental, emotional, and behavioral health problems, uh, including the social determinants of health within their communities, uh, to participate in a funding opportunity called the Foundations in Community Coalition Development. Uh, the one note for coalitions that are applying, uh, they do need to be, or their fiscal agent, uh, needs to be a, an IRS-designated 501c3 nonprofit. Uh, we know that community coalitions uh, may not have that capacity, especially if you are uh, if you are looking at uh, the foundations in community coalition development. So please know that just because your coalition may not be a 501c3, uh, as long as your fiscal agent is, uh, you are, are still very uh, eligible to apply. So let's talk about what to expect. Um, first of all, I know I, I can see a number of people in the room. Uh, and the, the attendees list, I, I know quite a few of you were at the Coalition Institute um, Summit uh, that took place not too long ago here in Central Ohio, where you would have seen Dr. Fran Butterfoss. Uh, I, I've had a chance to hear from her a few times, and it's been uh, absolutely incredible. So based on her work, uh, the book Ignite, uh, Getting Your Community Coalition Fired Up for Change, uh, up to 12 community coalitions will participate in a nine-month series of virtual learning opportunities by joining a learning community you will engage in a collaborative process with other Ohio community coalitions. So that means you're going to be working with your peers, other coalitions around the state, uh, right? So there will be up to 12 coalitions participating. Uh, sessions are designed to enhance coalition infrastructure and capacity based on coalition best practices. Those best practices, a lot of them are going to be pulled from Dr. Butterfoss's book, uh, as well as the expert panel of coaches, uh, mentors and people in place through the Ohio Coalition Institute uh, to support these, uh, these participants. Um, all participants are expected to, to develop and complete deliverables to support their coalition's work. Um, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, applicants uh, that receive funding uh, or that receive a, an award under this opportunity will receive a $5,000 flexible learning stipend to participate. Uh, as an incentive to participate. Uh, those selected can expect to participate in learning community activities uh, that are focused on developing the knowledge, skills, and attitudes for enhancing the infrastructure and sustainability of local community coalitions. That's a very fancy way of saying the foundational pieces. Um, uh, collaborating with peers to enhance community coalition efforts, right? The capacity building, finding new partners, engaging new partners, uh, engaging other coalitions through this, this, uh, this cohort, this, this learning community, uh, participating in professional development and leadership skill building opportunities. We'll talk about some of those opportunities. Uh, they are, are things that honestly, I, I wish I had uh, when I was uh, starting in prevention, uh, especially with a, a coalition. Uh, each participating coalition to maximize uh, the transference of new information and skills will be assigned a, a coalition coach who they will meet with on a monthly basis. Uh, and we'll talk about what that looks like because you will have, uh, there's a, already a list of dates out if anyone has taken a look at the RFA. Uh, all of the session dates are out, uh, but in addition to those, and I think it's kind of important to note, another obligation would be to meet uh, with your coach. And as outlined in the RFA, those meetings will be set um, between you and your coach. Uh, so that's kind of uh, a little more flexible, um, but it is really important. And, and we'll see them here in the, here in the presentation, uh, the list of uh, dates for the, the learning communities. Uh, your responsibilities, if selected, ensure that at least two coalition members and no more than four coalition members can fully and consistently participate. Uh, personnel changes uh, must be pre-approved by the Ohio Coalition Institute leadership team. Uh, what that means is that we would love consistency. Uh, we would love to see um, uh, several members from your, your coalition, your, your volunteers, your board, whatever your coalition may look like, uh, but we'd love to see um, uh, at least two, no more than four coalition members uh, participate from each coalition. 
Um, other responsibilities would be to further develop uh, effective knowledge and skills for enhancing the infrastructure and sustainability of their community-based coalition. Um, learning community meetings will be held virtually. Um, you can expect to participate in approximately eight two-hour virtual meetings um, monthly uh, and in-person and an in-person celebration event um, uh, between the months of September 2023 and June 2024. Um, these learning community meetings are mandatory, and again, at least two people must attend. Um, best practice would be to go ahead and place a hold on your calendars um, once you receive a notice of award, uh, because we do have, as we'll see again here in another slide, uh, all of the dates outlined already. Um, so again, you must also participate in monthly coaching sessions with your assigned coalition coach. Um, these coaching sessions, the time is designed um, to talk about um, and kind of receive the necessary support um, to, to drive home, to discuss uh, the things that you have learned in the learning community, uh, right? So it's one-on-one -on -one time with a coalition coach. You can, you can learn as a group, but then you have time to connect, time to ask questions, time to dig deeper, time to talk about the specifics that are, are impacting your coalition. Um, because although 12, 12 coalitions around the state is not a, uh, a large number, I'm certain anytime we bring more than one or two coalitions together, they're going to have different problems, different backgrounds, different member dynamics, all of those things that make coalitions coalitions. Um, so we want to make sure everyone has time to meet individually with their coach to talk about some of those um, very community specific things and, and learning challenges. Um, Reporting. As with just about all funding, there is a reporting uh, deadline. Uh, we want to make sure everyone is aware of that now going into this. Um, shouldn't be a surprise if, if you've received prevention funding before, uh, but a final report must be completed and submitted by Friday, July 9th, I'm sorry, Friday, July 19th, 2024 uh, by 5 p.m. And of course, last but not least, um, the responsibilities uh, would be attending all of the learning community sessions, uh, and these are the eight sessions as outlined uh, in the RFA. I'm going to leave that up on the screen for just a second. All right. So uh, participants, uh, as noted before, are going to receive a $5,000 flexible learning stipend. Uh, how can you use that money? Uh, applicants may choose between two options for how to utilize their awarded flexible learning stipends, uh, either to support personnel participating in the study group uh, or to increase coalition visibility in their community. Uh, the budget narrative will signal to the review committee how each applicant plans to allocate the funds. So that is to say there's not a question where you have to pick option A or option B. Uh, just simply fill out your budget narrative and we'll, we'll talk about what that looks like. Uh, fill out your budget narrative to indicate either um, uh, staff support um, or uh, coalition growth and visibility. Um, funds may be expended on salary and benefits, travel, lodging, per diems, marketing, supplemental training aids, materials, supplies, uh, participant group activities and incentives, meeting space, registration fees, uh, and other items approved in writing by the Ohio Coalition Institute leadership team. Uh, so any deviation from the items as outlined here in the RFA, uh, would need to be um, submitted in writing uh, and a response would be given back uh, on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, the one thing uh, that you may note uh, is, is absent is food and drink. Um, so growing your coalition is great and, and renting a space to grow your coalition and, and having a large meeting and meeting new partners um, are, are great things. Um, purchasing food and drink or going out for a nice meal as a coalition um, is not, uh, not an acceptable use of the flexible learning stipend funds. Uh, you must also, uh, and this is an acceptable expense of funds, uh, attend all of the learning community sessions, attend all coaching sessions, uh, complete the deliverables, uh, and attend the in-person celebration uh, in Columbus. Um, the event may require expenses related to travel and or lodging, depending on participant location. Uh, so you, depending on where your coalition may be, uh, you could figure out the mileage that it would take to drive to Columbus for the celebration, uh, budget roughly what a, a hotel room would cost. Um, those, those types of expenses are totally acceptable uh, and should be planned for accordingly. Uh, how to apply? 
The full RFA, including all the information covered in this presentation, uh, including the required budget template and the award assurances document can be found online uh, at ohiocoalitioninstitute.org. Uh, all applications and necessary documentation need to be submitted through SurveyMonkey. Uh, a link to the SurveyMonkey uh, is the QR code right there. Um, I, I, uh, I was going to put a link in, but uh, as I'm just sharing my screen, you wouldn't be able to click on that. I wanted to make sure that anyone uh, that wanted to go to the RFA and take a look at that would be able to do so. So the QR code there in the top right hand corner uh, will take you to the RFA, um, or I'm sorry, to the Survey Monkey. The Survey Monkey uh, is pretty easy. We're going to walk through. We're going to look at at that. We're going to look at the budget template and the assurances. Um, but the Survey Monkey is a, a pretty easy lift. Um, all of the questions, in fact, can be found in the RFA document. So prior to getting into SurveyMonkey and, and answering a few questions, if you'd like, uh, you can take the questions right out, out of the RFA. You can go to the SurveyMonkey and, and uh, save the application or, or print it as a PDF uh, if you'd like to get the, the questions that way. So there are a couple of ways um, that you can see the questions. All that to say, you don't have to just sit down in SurveyMonkey and type in your answers. We would encourage folks to, uh, to put some thought into this um, and, and because one of the questions is, that we ask is to, I, I believe, just describe your coalition. Um, and that should be a, a kind of a thoughtful response. Uh, so please know that uh, all of the documents are online, um, pretty easy to get to, and we'll walk through how to fill them out as well. Uh, the budget and budget narrative, again, online at the Ohio, at OhioCoalitionInstitute.org uh, and signed assurances, uh, which is a document we'll go over just kind of outlining um, some of the, the requirements and uh, the documentation uh, for accepting the funds. Um, so we'll, we'll go over there. We'll go over those as well as show you how to upload everything into SurveyMonkey. So we've talked about kind of the intent uh, of the Coalition Institute and this first uh, learning cohort. Uh, we've talked about the, the use of funds, um, how they can be spent, the requirements to receive the funds. We've talked about some of the obligations, uh, the expectations. Let's look at the actual application. Uh, and last slide I will end on um, before we, we um, transition over to some, some documents. Um, the deadline to apply, um, June 30th, um, by 5 p.m. Okay, we will go ahead and take a look. Bear with me as I transition some screen sharing here. And can everyone uh, see my screen okay? Uh, Nora, I'm, I'm going to call you out. You're on camera. Thank you. I thank you for the thumbs up. Um, <clears throat> so if you were to go to uh, ohiocoalitioninstitute.org, uh, scroll about three quarters of the way down the page, you're going to find a button that says download RFA. And that's going to download a couple of documents for you. It's going to download a, a zipped folder with a couple documents. Uh, the first one is the RFA. And in this, we have all of the information and and um, I don't want to make it too obvious, but it looks pretty familiar uh, if you were paying attention to the slides there, because all of that information was pulled directly out of the RFA. Uh, so all of that information, all of the information that you uh, should need is available in this document. I'm going to scroll through, we see, um, we talk about the scope of work, uh, of course, again, all of the dates, uh, but I want to get to uh, the content, uh, or I'm sorry, the, the questions. Um, so we're looking for some basic information about your coalition. Um, we want to know kind of who you are, where you're, where you're from. Uh, we want to know, um, we're going to ask maybe for some meeting minutes. If, if you are an established coalition uh, that can provide meeting minutes or a roster, we'd love to see that kind of documentation, but it's not required. Um, we want to know a, a mission and a vision if you have one. Um, we, we just kind of want to get a feel for where you are as a coalition. Um, we're looking for some program specific information. Um, we are looking for, uh, again, a budget template and narrative, uh, and the signed assurances for the award. Um, we also have, 
the budget template. Uh, you can see it's a pretty simple document. Um, we're asking you to kind of map out how you will spend the $5,000 should you be selected uh, to participate in the learning community. Uh, so we can see personnel costs, supplies, travel, conferences, training, registration, um, all of those things. Uh, we have two, two columns, the amount that you'll receive as part of the, the uh, Ohio Coalition Institute and as part of this learning community. Um, and then if you'd like to note any donations or, or in-kind, um, um, we, we would love to see those. We'd love to see, right? I think that paints a, uh, a picture of your coalition um, to see what kind of support you're receiving. Uh, and then down at the bottom, because we've talked about throughout, uh, we've talked about uh, both a budget and budget narrative. So it's one document. We're going to ask you here in the, the rows and columns of the budget, just map out some, some big bucket expenses um, but down here in the budget narrative, we'd actually like a little bit more description. Uh, this would be a chance for you to talk about how you're going to use it for uh, staff time and staff support, uh, which is one of the options, one of the permissible options. Uh, or this would be a great place to indicate that you're going to use it to grow your coalition visibility, uh, capacity, those types of things. Um, so kind of map out uh, not just a sentence that says we will use this for staff support, um, but let us know how you're actually going to use it. Um, let us know, especially if you're, you plan to use the funds to grow your coalition um, presence and visibility in your community, um, we would, we'd love to hear uh, what, what you plan to do. Um, not so much that it can be um, graded as part of the rubric, um, but because I think as a, a group of curious prevention specialists and coalition professionals, um, everybody that will read these will also just want to know what coalitions across Ohio are doing. Um, so it's a, a, a great chance to tell us about yourselves. Um, we also have the assurances. And this is an argument if you've ever received funds from PAA, um, OSPF, uh, any, any number of agencies that hand out funds um, or are responsible for you know, grant management or stipends or uh, opportunities like this, you've probably seen a, a similar document. Uh, and on this document, you're just going to agree to some, some basic things. Um, that you will provide us with a copy of your W-9, um, that you will only use the funds as outlined in the grant application. Um, you will uh, acknowledge the source of the funds where applicable. Um, we've got some reporting dates. Um, I'm, I'm not going to read, I promise, I'm not going to read uh, all 12 of these um, start to finish. Um, it is available for download again on the uh, OhioCoalitionInstitute.org website. Uh, but we do need these as part of your application. We need to know that you're going to agree to these, uh, these stipulations. So we'd encourage everyone to read them. And what this form looks like, this is a two-page form. Uh, you're going to, uh, here where it says the undersigned grantee, uh, you're going to write your agency name, your coalition name, uh, the, the name of the organization receiving the funds. Um, and then here at the bottom, you're going to sign uh, either your CEO, your executive director, an authorized signer, whoever that may be, um, based on the structure of your, your coalition. Uh, we're, so we're going to ask for that person's uh, signature and the organization they represent, because we know that sometimes coalitions, as we talk about fiscal agents, being a 501c3, um, we'd like to know where that person actually works. Are they uh, uh, an employee of the coalition? Are they part of the fiscal agent? Um, so just asking you to identify the organization that person is with. Um, and then a signature from the fiscal agent. Um, so again, it could be a coalition coordinator signature, an executive director signature on the first line. Um, we wanna know the organization on the second line. And on the third line, we'd like a signature from your fiscal agent. Uh, in some cases, for coalitions that are actually their own fiscal agent, um, it could be the same signature. Um, so please, if, if you have questions about that, um, we'd, we'd be happy to, you know, happy to, uh, to, to help in any way we can. Um, right, if you have a question, is this an appropriate signature? Um, let us know. We're, we're happy to help. Uh, so those documents are part of the RFA, right? Kind of start to finish is a very long document. And the last couple of pages here in the RFA, uh, let me see if I can expand my screen a little bit, uh, are the rubric, uh, right? It's only fair if we're going to ask you to apply and you know we're going to be scoring these. Um, we of course want to let you know how we will be scoring them. Uh, so just for telling us your, your basic uh, information, worth 10 points. Um, your program specific information, pardon me, 
uh, scrolled a, a little too fast there, some program specific information, uh, just telling us about your coalition, um, some of those supporting documents. I promise I, I have used a mouse before, uh, despite what this might look like. Uh, so we're going to ask for some of your program specific information, uh, right current membership, um, if you have committees or subcommittees, those are the types of things. Uh, if, you, if your coalition currently has a, a written strategic plan or a logic model, any of those supporting documents, uh, we'd, we'd love to see them. Um, and um, filling out the budget. Um, filling out the budget uh, is worth points. That is, uh, again, how you let us know which of the two permissible options you, you're pursuing for use of the funds. So it is filling it out, filling it out completely, and clearly signaling which of the, those two options you're pursuing um, are, are uh, an important weighted part of this. Uh, and then again, just we will mark that um, you have or, or have not successfully uploaded the assurances. Um, so all of those documents are in this one 11 page document. And the reason when you go to ohiocoalitioninstitute.org, uh, the reason when you, you download that zip file, you get three documents is because we wanted to make it easy uh, to get to the budget template, which is going to be the second of the three documents you, you download. Uh, this is a simple, easy to fill out form. Uh, you can edit it online. Uh, if recognizing the different coalitions have different capacities, uh, if you need to print it and fill it out, that is totally acceptable. Um, print it, fill it out, scan it back into us uh, if you don't have uh, the ability to do it electronically. Um, regardless, though, we do, again, need to see the budget narrative. Um, so not just, an, and I'm driving that point home as someone that is, um, has reviewed these things for a, a few years, um, not specifically for the Coalition Institute, as this is a, a first-time opportunity, um, but other funding that the Prevention Action Alliance has, has been a part of. Um, I know that that budget narrative portion um, can get overlooked sometimes, so I want to make sure everybody fills it out completely uh, and correctly. Uh, the third of the, the three documents you'll download, again, just for ease of, uh, ease of application completion, uh, you're going to get the assurances as a separate document, um, right? You, we're, we uh, don't want to assume that anyone can edit a PDF and pull these documents out or, uh, or, or do anything like that. So we just, for ease of use, we want to make sure these things are available separately. Uh, so we have, again, the complete RFA, we have the budget, uh, where you can provide both the, um, the allocation of the funds and your narrative uh, and the assurances that need to be signed and completed um, when you submit your application. Pardon me. Uh, I do want to note that the signatures on the assurances must be in blue or black ink uh, or done electronically uh, with an Adobe certified signature. Um, so using the cursive font in Microsoft Word to type your name uh, will not be an acceptable electronic signature. And bear with me once again as we transition. I'm going to jump into the actual SurveyMonkey um, so we can see what that looks like. So I am on the, I'm logged in uh, as the kind of the owner of the survey. So uh, you can disregard the, the, the completion time over here. Um, but when you, when you scan the QR code or go into the survey monkey, uh, you're going to have just a, a few questions and it's everything that we've asked for, or pardon me, we're included in the RFA. Uh, we're asking, first of all, who's completing this application? Uh, because we know that sometimes the person completing the application may not be the person um, that we would need to talk to if we had a question. Um, so if we get a, if we um, if if we have an incomplete application, um, we would like to know who who should we talk to, right? Who's completing the application? So if there's a problem with it, um, we we know who to talk to. Um, and then we're going to ask for some 
uh, coalition information, uh, right? Tell us your coalition. Tell us your executive director's name, their email. Uh, we'd like to know about your fiscal officer. Uh, we, of course, is, as funds are involved, we and, and we need um, to verify some nonprofit status, we'll ask for a federal tax ID number, um, a mission and vision, if you have one, uh, and we'd love a link to your social media. Um, we'd also like you to describe your coalition. Um, this is an open-ended question. Um, you, if you have an elevator uh, pitch, uh, you can share that with us. You can share that your coalition is new, uh, right? If you're, uh, if you're a new coalition, we want to hear that. Um, so please don't think that because you don't have uh, a grand description of a coalition, or if you don't have a mission and vision, um, that, that you shouldn't apply. Uh, because we would still love to see any interested coalition, again, regardless of problem of practice, uh, to apply. Uh, and then membership documents. Uh, if any of the following exist, please upload them. Um, and it's, it's the things that we talked about in the, the RFA. Uh, so if there's a list of subcommittees, um, a schedule of meetings over the past year, just something to, to demonstrate some of your activities, what you're working on, if you have a strategic plan, um, if you have a member list, um, just any supporting documents to, to let us kind of take a peek at your coalition, let us know what you're working on. Um, I think one, to make sure that, that you would be a good fit for the foundations of coalition development, um, but also again, just so the, the Coalition Institute can, can get an idea for what's taking place across Ohio. And last but not least, a uh, really simple screen. We're going to ask you to upload a budget, uh, upload a W-9. This is a form uh, that we don't have a template for. This is uh, an IRS form. Um, everyone, uh, I, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say everyone. Um, if you as a coalition don't have a W-9, check with your fiscal agent. Uh, if you have questions about a W-9, that's something we can assist with. Um, it is a, it's not specific at all to, to this process. If you've ever applied for funds uh, or ever received funds anywhere, uh, chances are you probably have a W-9 filled out. Uh, and then a copy of the signed assurances. Um, <clears throat> again, signatures will not be accepted unless they are signed with a, a blue or black pen or spinner with an Adobe certified signature. So all you're going to do for these three things, uh, you're going to select choose file, and then you're just going to upload uh, either PDF, a Word doc. Uh, it can even be a picture, uh, right? If, and, and I assure you, we have had coalitions submit documents uh, to Prevention Action Alliance that way before. They will print the assurances, uh, right? Talking about technology and, and how not every coalition or organization has the same technology. Uh, if you need to print uh, your budget, um, fill it out by hand, sign it by hand, and then you don't have a scanner to scan it back in, if you have a camera phone, uh, you can upload a picture of that document. Um, while not our preferred format, uh, we don't want there to be any limitations or any barriers uh, and recognizing again that, that not every coalition or organization has the same technology at, at their disposal. Um, we wanted to make this as widely accessible as possible. Um, if you have questions about that or, or can't meet that, um, that, uh, that requirement or, or that uh, part of the application, um, please reach out um, and we'll, we'll make accommodations as needed. Um, I am going to ask um, pardon me. Um, I'm going to uh, ask now as we kind of close out the survey monkey, we've taken a look at um, kind of the, the need to know information, the, the key pieces in the in the slide deck. We've looked at the supporting documents that are available at ohiocoalitioninstitute.org. Um, I told you all you would be very tired of hearing me say that. Um, and I will open it up now for questions. Uh, so we've got a few in the chat already. Bear with me, I'm adjusting some screens. I, I have more uh, screens at my desk than anybody should. And that sometimes makes it more confusing than less confusing. Um, yeah, so a uh, couple of, uh, so a uh, question here in the chat and I would encourage everybody to, to continue to, to type things in. Uh, we're a small group. If you'd like to just unmute and, and ask a question that way, I think we can handle that. 
Um, uh, could a coalition's fiscal agent be a government entity? Um, yes. Um, if your fiscal agent is uh, an Adam H board, a health department, uh, et cetera, uh, right? We know that we have coalitions that are housed in uh, ESCs, uh, different boards, um, uh, health departments uh, across the state. Uh, yeah, so absolutely, uh, that would be an acceptable, uh, acceptable submission. Um, I have a volunteer coalition uh, who all have nine to five jobs. Uh, can I designate several different members to be on these meetings on a rotating basis with me? Uh, so I, I think without knowing, Denise, without knowing specifics, um, I think as outlined in the RFA, we would just ask that you email um, uh, the Ohio Coalition Institute uh, team, uh, and that would be something that would be, um, I think, probably uh, a decision that the coaches, the mentors, um, right, as we look at your application and, and uh, kind of where where uh, your coalition capacity might stand. Um, of course, as outlined, I, I think the best practice would be uh, a set uh, group of coalition attendees, but I understand this is a, a unique circumstance. So um, I think that would be dependent on your application. Um, Yeah, so um, I see a question. Uh, we are not a coalition. Um, Hi. Um, a, a, it's yeah, a, a <laughs> I'm, I, I'm sorry? I, I was just introducing myself. It's my question. I was going to say, oh. I can kind of verbalize it if that's a little easier. Sure. Yeah, so um, we're a faith-based nonprofit, and um, we have received funding before, but typically when it's been that the requirement is a coalition. We fall up under the MHAC, which is the Mental Health and Addiction Advocacy Coalition, but we ourselves are not. And so I didn't know if that then meant we would not be able to apply. Uh, you know, I, I think as long as your fiscal agent uh, is a 501c3, um, and I, I have worked with uh, MAC before, and I, I, I believe you guys are, I'm, I'm not sure why you wouldn't be, but of, of course I, I would want you to check that and verify that. Um, but yeah, as long as you're a, and I, I know it's kind of cheesy just to go back to the answer that's in the RFA, um, but you know, a coalition as outlined in this learning opportunity doesn't have to be a, a coalition like you may know it, um, right? It, it doesn't have to be uh, a, a, like we would think of a suicide prevention coalition or a substance use prevention coalition. Um, you know, it, as long as it is a group of individuals um, you know, bringing together different sectors across the community um, to influence social norms and community policy, um, I, I certainly think that would be acceptable. Um, I think we're, we're encouraging, I'm actually certain we're encouraging um, anyone with an, an interest, um, uh, you know, a small group of people, uh, even if you feel like you don't have all of the sectors of a coalition represented, um, that is the, the perfect scenario um, to join the foundations of community coalition development, um, right? You Sometimes you, you have to learn how to build before you can build. So the expectation is not that you bring, um, not at all uh, that you, that someone would bring a, a fully functioning um, formed coalition to this. Um, so again, we, we encourage everyone to apply uh, regardless of, of problem of practice um, or, or, you know, if, if uh, regardless of capacity. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, 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 of course. Um, uh, we're planning to have uh, four staff listed in our application. Is it, is it acceptable for those who attend the learning community sessions to be different? Um, for example, two of the four being available for one session. Um, so I think uh, Taylor by design, we're looking for uh, we're looking for continuity, um, right? We 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 want uh, we don't, we don't want to put all of our eggs in one basket. So if that coalition coordinator uh, you know finds a new job or you know another opportunity uh, arises, we don't want all of this great foundational information to leave. Um, but we're we're hoping to spread it out or at least have some continuity there. Um, so, you know, two to four people, um, I, I think that again would be a question if you can outline the specifics in more detail uh, and submit that to the Ohio Coalition Institute team, that would be something, um, you know, it, and again, not to be too tongue in cheek because we're talking about coalition work, um, but local, uh, local problems require local solutions, right? So what uh, may be applicable to your coalition and, and your, uh, the way you participate in this, um, maybe slightly different than somebody that has all volunteers. So uh, please, if you, if you have a question about that, email us your specifics. 
um, and, and we can address those um, on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, our fiscal agent is a community foundation. Um, well, uh, if the community foundation is a 501c3, um, which I, I would uh, venture a guess being a community foundation, they would be. Um, but again, uh, I would encourage you to check specifically with your fiscal agent. Um, as long as you're a 501c3, your group of people uh, working to influence social norms and community policy, that is more than okay, Catherine. All right. Any Thank other, you. of course, uh, any other questions? All right. Well, that said, uh, I am, uh, I and Prevention Action Alliance are um, but a, a small part um, of an amazing group of prevention professionals from around the state. Um, I, you know, I, I know we mentioned our, our partners, um, of course, the Ohio Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services, the Ohio Suicide Prevention Foundation, uh, ourselves, Prevention Action Alliance and Prevention First. Uh, there's uh, so much more support coming in through our coaches, uh, our, our everyone helping to plan the, the Coalition Institute Summit. Um, I see Andrea and her team here with Youth Thrive Consulting. Uh, definitely worth giving a shout out to uh, for the, the amazing work uh, being done on this as well. Um, I'm sorry, I see a, another question. There's, there's Andrea. Um, <clears throat> another question, if I have a brand new group and we haven't built foundational structure, mission bylaw structure, is this opportunity still open to us? Um, Amy, I, I would say that this opportunity, um, you, you should apply not in spite of not having those things, but because you don't have those things. Um, I think this is a, a great opportunity for coalitions um, to really, a, again, um, it is foundations in community coalition development. Um, so please, if, if those are the types of things, uh, uh, foundational kind of capacity building things your coalition can use, uh, even if you have one and you feel like it needs to be refined, um, I can tell you being a, a former coalition coordinator, I inherited a mission statement that was maybe older than I was. Um, so just because you have one of those things doesn't mean it's where it, doesn't mean it's where it needs to be. Um, so again, if, if you feel like um, foundations and community coalition development is for you, um, I would encourage you to apply. Um, have it, have it and need to work on it, have it and want to write a new one now that you will learn how to write a new one. Um, those are, are all three great entry points into this opportunity. Uh, I see another question. Uh, we, we are a small group at our university. Do we have to service individuals beyond our institution to qualify? Uh, that is a, a great question. And as outlined, and, and bear with me, I'm, I'm going to pull up the specific language in the RFA, just so I'm, I'm quoting this specifically. Um, for the purpose of this learning opportunity, uh, a coalition is defined as a group of diverse members who serve a defined community. Uh, so a defined community is, is not, um, you know, of course we do have defined communities, um, your city, your town, your village, et cetera. Uh, I think as we all know though, um, a community is so much more than that. Um, we're a community of professionals right now uh, serving Ohio. Um, so your community, uh, as long as it is defined, and I think that would be a, a, a great piece to include in that tell us about your coalition uh, uh, section, uh, tell us who you serve. Um, what is the community you serve? That is up to you to define. We know that a community can be so many things to so many people. Um, so just as we would encourage everyone, uh, no matter what your problem of practice is, um, no matter what your community is, uh, if you are a, a group of individuals working to influence social norms and community policy. Um, we, we want to see you apply. Uh, so yes, uh, in, in short, uh, you're, the answer is yes. Um, I, I think that would be a, a great, uh, great opportunity. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, and for, uh, for anyone not following along in the chat, uh, they, they said thank you. So of, of course, happy to, happy to help. Um, if any other questions uh, are, thought of, and I will say that I, I do my best thinking immediately after a meeting, not during the meeting. Um, if you go to the Ohio Coalition Institute website, ohiocoalitioninstitute.org, um, there are uh, there's some contact information on there. 
um, questions can be submitted there. Um, you can also, I will share our questions, email address at Prevention Action Alliance, requests at preventionactionalliance.org. Um, other questions can be submitted there. Uh, Andrea coming in hot with the, the link to uh, the Ohio Coalition Institute website in the chat. Thank you so much. Um, um, any other questions can, can be submitted through that website. Um, and we will work to get questions and answers to those submitted questions, those uh, questions that are, are submitted through uh, email. Uh, we will work to get those questions and answers online so that everyone has uh, the same information. Um, and I see a, another question has come in. Can we talk about the, um, can we talk about time of monthly coaching meeting? Um, Gregory, help, help me out. Are we talking about the, the time commitment um, or the, the dates and times? Uh, the, the, the length of time and who needs to be in that meeting with the coach. Can it, can it still be two people um, and can those two people interchange? You know, I, I think that is going to be something that would be a conversation to have with your coach. Um, again, depending on, on where your coalition may be uh, and how well, you know, if, if um, of, of the eight week sessions, um, you know, if through the first four or five weeks, your, your coalition is not needing a lot of support, I think that's something that can be talked about and also demonstrated through the work that your coalition is doing um, and with your coach and, and you can you can talk about your needs there. Um, whereas some coalitions may need far less support, other coalitions may need a lot more support. Um, so I think that is going to be between the coach and the, the coalition. Um, you, you're just trying to, uh, not trying to be ambiguous, but rather trying to just trying to support coalitions where they are. Um, you know, sometimes learning something new requires very little follow-up. Sometimes it requires a lot of follow-up. Um, and, and leaving that up to um, uh, kind of the mentor-mentee relationship um, is, I, I think, ideal. Um, all right. Again, any other questions? And I'll, I'll stay on. We've got a few minutes left. Um, if anyone is interested in staying on and, and uh, asking another question, you're more than welcome. Um, but thank you all so much for attending. Uh, thank you to the partners of the Ohio Coalition Institute that are in the room. Uh, those, of course, that are not as well. Um, but I, I know that when we when we have Zooms now, because we have so many things going on uh, in, in our, our hybrid world, um, if someone is in a Zoom, it's because they, they want to be there. It's because they value the content. Uh, and so if we're taking a, uh, almost an hour out of your day today, uh, I just want to say thanks um, from Prevention Action Alliance um, and all of the amazing partners uh, they make up the Ohio Coalition Institute. So thank you all. Thank you, James. Thank you, Molly. Thank you. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. You too. Thank you.